Here we will study the first reported observation of a Harnoff bomb oscillations with a period corresponding to one quantum of magnetic flux. The sample was a ring made of gold evaporated on an insulating substrate exposed to a magnetic field perpendicular to it. And the data is shown in this graph here where you can see that the resistance shows visible periodic oscillations as a function of magnetic field. And keeping in mind that one period of a Hanov bomb oscillations corresponds to one flux quantum added to the ring, we can, from the frequency that we see in this picture, calculate the radius of the ring. The interval in the magnetic field corresponding to one period times the area of the ring is one quantum of flux. This interval contains 10 maxima, that delta B is 7.59 millitesla. And we can solve for um, the area or directly for the radius, which is um, square root of area over pi. And here we obtain, with the numbers that, uh, that we have, 416 nanometers. This value can be compared to what is reported by the authors of, uh, of this research, who have measured uh, the radius of the ring using a scanning transmission electron microscope and find a mean lithographic radius of 412 nanometers which is very close to this value, and this is what allows you to conclude that we see uh, oscillations of period h over e and not h over 2e as in the charvin charney experiment. The next question one might ask is whether Lorentz force is relevant in this experiment here. Lorentz force is relevant if the radius of cyclotron motion becomes smaller than the radius of the ring. The cyclotron radius is uh, the ratio of Fermi velocity, so the tangential velocity to uh, cyclotron motion, over the angular vo velocity, which is the cyclotron, uh, cyclotron velocity. And this expression is a reduced Planck's constant times the Fermi wave vector, which is given, divided by charge of charge carriers times magnetic field. And so this condition of cyclotron radius being smaller than the radius of the ring, this gives us a condition for B field, which then has to be larger than an expression, which we can evaluate. So this is Kf, Fermi wave vector, over E times the radius, and this is about 19 Tesla, a very large value which does not occur in this experiment. And it's a value which is very large to what you see, uh, for example, in experiments involving semiconducting nanostructures. And this difference is due to the relatively large Fermi wave vector in metallic systems. And ultimately, it's due to different um, charge carrier densities. But in any case, in this experiment, Lorentz force plays no role. The next question is whether transport in this ring is ballistic or diffusive. We are given an elastic mean free path, which is provided by the authors in a paper describing the fabrication techniques uh, for the sample. And the elastic mean free path is of the order of 25 nanometers. So this is the mean distance traveled by electrons between two elastic scattering events. And those 25 nanometers are much smaller than the dimension of the ring, for example, 2 pi times radius. So that one electron will 
scatter many times before exiting the ring. The path will be completely diffusive. And so on. What we learn since we see the Harnell Home effect is that elastic scattering does not destroy phase coherence. One way you can think about this is that elastic scattering is a reversible process which affects the electron's phase in a deterministic way so that all electrons scattering on the same impurities accumulate the same phase and coherence is preserved. So what is the amplitude of oscillations? Is it large? We can evaluate it, so uh, evaluate the, the relative amplitude from the data provided in the graph. The absolute amplitude of oscillations is about 0 0.03 ohm. And the background that's given in the exercise and in the paper it's about 29.5 ohm. So that the relative amplitude is about 0.1%. And before commenting on this number, uh, let's discuss two possible mechanisms which lead to a reduction of the amplitude of a of bomb oscillations. So First, we want to consider a possibility that the partial waves are not equally partitioned in the two arms of the ring. To figure out what happens in that case, we calculate the transmission of the ring, which, as we have learned, is the square of the norm of um, and transmission amplitudes. In a simple model, the simplest possible case, where we consider the two paths going in each arm of the ring, and we neglect any uh, reflection events, so we just do some sort of first order approximation, which is good enough uh, for our purpose. In, in this case, the two transmission probabilities are described by different amplitudes. So in one case, let's say we have A plus delta times the wave propagating in one arm, which acquires an Aharnoff boom phase which with, uh, say, a negative sign. And in the other arm, we have a minus delta as an amplitude, and the phase, the Harnoff of bomb phase, will have a plus sign. So to evaluate this expression, We can, for example, notice that there is a common factor e to the power i times k i r0, which has a norm of 1, so we can just discard it. And we can collect the terms multiplying a and delta. We have a multiplying the term with negative um, a b phase. plus this opposite phase term and for delta we will see this minus sign up here minus If you look carefully, you will see that here you have a cosine 
and here you have a sign due to the difference in signs here. So exactly you have 2a times cosine of this face minus 2 times i times delta times sine of the Sahana form face. Okay, have real number plus i times real number. The norm squared is simply this squared plus this squared. And we can use the formulas for the square of a cosine and square of a sine. And collecting everything, we get the expression 4 times a square plus delta square plus the difference of a square and delta square times cosine of 2 pi psi or psi naught. So those terms appear because cos x square is 1 plus cos 2x. Now looking at this expression here, if we set delta equal to 0, which means equal partition between the two arms, we have the familiar expression for the hanov bohm effect where we have a background and this periodic modulation. And if we make partition unequal by increasing delta, this modulation will have a decreased amplitude. So that we learn that unequal partitioning of the partial waves will reduce the harnoff bomb oscillations that we observe. The other interesting situation is what happens if you have n modes in the arms of the ring. So here we have this simple picture of a single mode propagating in mind. And now we consider n modes. So in, in the landau orbital picture of uh, transport due to single modes, um, we have to consider the fact that the electrons running through the ring acquire a phase at zero magnetic field, which is this usual dynamic phase in quantum mechanics, which is energy dependent. So that this phase, the zero field phase, will be different for each of the n modes. And um, the, if, we, if we measure the resistance of the ring, what we measure is an average over all the modes, so that we are averaging over those phase terms. Is that it's as if you add a random phase here, and you average over all of them, you will simply cancel out uh, this, this modulation. And uh, well, this can be studied uh, in, uh, with, with an exact algebraic uh, calculation. For example, this landau orbital formalism is applied in the paper in Physical Review B, uh, volume 31, page 6207. And um, there it is found, so within landau orbital formalism, that the relative amplitude of oscillations in terms of resistance, so the value we have calculated here, scales with 1 over n, the number of modes. And the number of modes is very, very, very large in this ring due to the small Fermi wavelength. And in fact, it is also provided by Webb in a follow-up paper to this one and is given to be order of 10 to the power of 5. So that if this prediction were true, we would not be able to observe the, the effect. In fact, we see um, an amplitude which is roughly a factor 100 larger than this prediction. What we conclude from this is that this picture of 
transport by single modes, lambda wire vertical conductivity is transmission of single modes, is not an appropriate approach in the regime where you have tens of thousands of modes contributing to transport. There is a completely different toolbox for dealing with uh, those systems in uh, in the deep in the dis diffusive regime, uh, where you can use um, a so-called transmission matrix formalism, where conductance is evaluated using Green's functions methods, and uh, the one uses a relation between conductance and and the, sc the scattering matrix in the system which ultimately stems from uh, Kubo's formula in a standard linear response theory. So the calculations are difficult, but there is a, a universal simple result that in diffusive coherent systems, in terms of conductance, there, regardless of the size of the system, fluctuations and oscillations of amplitude of the order of one conductance quantum. Uh, this is a general result, and um, this toolbox for dealing with, with those diffusive, diffusive coherent systems has been applied specifically to a metallic ring and there it is also obtained that uh, the oscillations of um, periodicity h over e are of the order more or less of one conductance quantum. Now we can, within this picture of os amplitude and conductance, look back at the data of, of, uh, of web and co-workers and uh, here we can try to to estimate what is delta G in this case. Delta G, we can estimate it, for example, as 1 over R0 minus 1 over R0 plus delta R, such as to transform the resistance oscillation amplitude in a, in a conductance amplitude. For small values of delta R, this can be simplified to delta r over r zero squared and plugging in the numbers we find a value of 3.4 to the 10 minus 5 Siemens which is the inverse of, of an ohm and this here is of the order of a e square over h if you plug in the numbers so that now we can we can comment on on this number is it small is it big well there is not really a concept of big or, or large or small it's consistent with this universal prediction for diffusive coherent systems <laughs>